Welcome, you're watching Kaleidoscope Selling Life News Capsule. Welcome to Selling Life News Capsule. The Indian rupee is now a designated foreign currency in Sri Lanka. The addition of the INR into the foreign currency portfolio is built to add considerable benefits to trade, especially in tourism and some manufacturing sectors. But while all is gung-ho, what is the ground reality? Standard Chartered Bank just completed its first INR transaction for a multinational corporate client in Mumbai. So, we invited the CEO of Standard Chartered Sri Lanka, Bingumal Thevaratantri, to the studio to get more clarity. Sri Lanka has started transacting in Indian rupees. What are the benefits that Sri Lanka will actually have doing this? So, Savitri, if I only look at trade in the early 90s, 1995, our trade volume with India was something like 400 million on the imports. Every year it has grown by 10%. Today, in 2022, if you look at the numbers, it's four and a half billion dollars of trade on the import side alone. That's 26 percent of our trade volume. So, moment you tra start trading with uh, INR, when you're importing from India, that's a price advantage. That will significantly bring the price down for the products. So, it's, it's an added benefit for the consumer. On the investor side, they might see Sri Lanka as a cheap destination to manufacture using Indian raw material. Now, they'll always go to India for India. But if they want to manufacture in Sri Lanka and export to Africa for that matter, based on the treaties we have, they might see Sri Lanka as a destination to invest because the, you know, there's a price advantage on the Indian raw material import side. On the inflows, uh, tourism is the biggest. We used to have 30 percent of the tourists coming from India before the pandemic. 30 percent of a 2 million was a significant number. Now just imagine India has uh, 7 percent of the Indian population got passport, there's close to 100 million passport holders and we're only targeting 2 million tourists globally, right? So we should bring 2 million tourists from India. I mean just imagine if you bring 2 million tourists from India, we used to get 4 billion dollars of uh, tourism revenue before the pandemic, we can make the 4 billion from India and you'll be paying in INR, gaining INR here, paying in INR. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to, you know, commercialize INR in Sri Lanka from that perspective. What about the challenges in actually transacting with Indian rupees? Some of the Indian exporters might say, I don't want to invoice in uh, INR because I, I import uh, in, in USD and I have to manufacture and re-export, so I don't want to expose myself. So there will be a pushback on some of the exporters in India as well. That's one thing. When India becomes a, you know, a base, you know, a reserve currency and a bigger reserve currency, we have to do reserve management. Then we have to carefully watch the devaluation of INR and our exposure to Sri Lanka uh, as you know using INR as one of the large reserve currencies. Uh, initially it will be tough but I believe that tourism is the way to go. A lot of the Indian tourists will prefer to bring their INRs rupees and use it here. So it has to start somewhere. What does ACB bring to the table in this context? Uh, so we set up the bank in 1853 in Kolkata and Mumbai and we were doing trade between India and China. So these are our home markets. So from that perspective also we have a role to play. And, and we really and, and India is a three trillion economy growing at seven percent, and India will grow as a global leader in a multipolar world. India will play a significant role in the global economy, and we want definitely want to partner with that. Don't miss out on our weekly program. Subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We will take care of the risks. Silly good life.